Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This week we're near Portland, Oregon for Willamette River, Smallmouth Bass, and Clackamas River Coho. Now if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf and this is Angler West Television. All right, this morning we're launching out a Charbonneau here. Gonna go chase some smallmouth. Maybe a large mouth or two here on the upper Willamette. This is something that we kind of got excited about doing here about a year ago. Uh, salmon fishing is what it was, you know, kind of slow and nothing else to do. And we thought, why not fish right here in the backyard and see what's going on? So, uh, you know, we found out that there's this really cool, fun fishery right here in the backyard. Um, cool thing about it is you can fish from anywhere on the lower river all the way to as far as, as far as you want up the Willamette and there's smallmouth all over the place through this river so I'm gonna roll out here down just a short ways and uh, get them out and see what we can find. Deploy the motor Junior. Alright, so we're setting up here to get started. We got some nice little rocks over here, a little bit of lumber, got the trees, um, everything a smallmouth likes. And uh, so we should be able to find some of those. You never know, seen a coho or two roll, so see what happens there too. Uh, so this morning I'm starting with a five inch uh, pumpkin senko with uh, black flake and just a simple uh, wacky rig, no weight. I just have a little Yamamoto with a little way to jig here. Little pink and purple flakes. Hopefully it gets some stuff. It's fish. Actually, it's funny. We're all rigged up wacky, aren't we? And actually, on the Willamette here, I kind of like to run them with a worm hook because there's a little more snaggy. Tend to hang up a little less. With these things, I'll just work them really slow. I'll let them sink and sit there for a minute and then just kind of slowly working them back to the boat. Just a little drag. So Willamette, we're on the Willamette River this morning. Uh, you know, we see I-5 right here behind us. Uh, Wilsonville, we're probably I don't know, 10 miles out of Portland. So, you know, almost right in the heart of the city. Uh, the Willamette runs, it's a tributary of the Columbia, runs from, from uh, you know, Kelly Point Park down there all the way to Southern Oregon. And uh, like I was saying earlier, you can catch bass all throughout this system. Uh, you know, and actually a multitude of species, like I mentioned before, possibility of a coho, these fish up here naturally are eating a lot of uh, crawfish, a lot of crawdad. Um, actually, when I was a kid, we used to put traps out up here. There's tons of them in this river. So I think that's primarily what they're feeding on. Um, matter of fact, this is kind of a new color that I've been trying out. And I thought, you know, it's got that yellow, yellow underside. Or I'm sorry, orange kind of crawfish looking. No, don't need that. Oh, lost that. This is on the smaller side of what we normally get, but gets us started. Got us started, bear. Oh, here we go, here we go. <laughs> Not bad little guy. One thing great about a wacky rig is we don't go through so many of these baits. Um, it's a great way to save bait. You know, we used to run them, stick the hook right through the middle of that plastic. Uh, you catch a fish, maybe two, and you're done with that worm. With these wacky rigs, they're attached to that rubber band right in the middle, that little O-ring, and it just hangs right nice on the hook there. And man, you can get, what, a dozen fish out of a bait. 
20, whatever, you know, as long as they don't shoot up too bad. See a fish. Welcome back to the Willamette River. I'm Justin Wolf. Jason Rice of Hammerhead Guide Service, his son Charlie and Dave Doman are after smallmouth bass with plastics like the Yamamoto Cowboy. There you go, Bear. Yeah! <laughs> That's a good one. Thumb him up. Here we go. All right, so this last fish Charlie found on a uh, cowboy. Kind of more of a, uh, more of a kind of a crawdad looking, looking uh, grub that we got going here. So a little bit, a little bit bigger bait as well. So maybe, maybe this is the way to roll for a little bit bigger fish. So I'm using a twist block hook here. So we just twist it on right here. Put the hook right back here and back. Here, I'm gonna put some crawdad bait wax on here. Just rub it right on there. There we go. We just tried a new bait I haven't tried before. Uh, not sure how to say it. Looks kind of like a salamander. And it was just getting smoked a second ago. Hopefully, he hangs with us here. Oh, oh, I think he's with us. Oh, yeah. He is. So another new bait. Great. He's not a monster. But fun. So, yeah. Another uh, Yamamoto plastic. And like I always say, I... I haven't found a Yamamoto that doesn't catch a fish, <laughs> but uh, kind of a cool deal. It's got that big tail on it, and uh, you know they're eating them Look for a bigger fish. Yeah, so we're looking at about 62 degree water temperature this morning. It's down a couple degrees. Not super cold, but uh, seeming like we're really got to slow it down for them here. They're just not aggressive like usual. Oh. Getting a little better. Yeah. All right, what's your secret? What are you doing? Charlie, Charlie, Charlie did it again. Let me see, what do you got going here? Uh, you got the swim sink out. All right, all right. You got any sauce on that or what? Mm, bait wax to have on there. All right, we're gonna let him go. I know there's bigger ones here. You need a net, Dave? Uh, don't know. Let's have a look. Under Looks the like boat. you do when I saw it. <laughs> yeah, it's a better fish. <laughs> Coughing up crawdads. There we go. Yeah. 12 inches. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was kind of motoring. This one feels maybe. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, I'm on watermelon black flake right now. That's two in a row. I'll get it. Got it? Yep. Come on back. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Can you find a pocket? Find one? Oh, easy. There we go. Yeah, Charlie's brightening it up a little bit up there with the chartreuse. They are really bronzy down here. He's not hitting very well at all. Come on. Well, there seems to be a pretty decent pocket of them right here. 
because they haven't been biting worth a darn all morning. You know, a fish every 10, 15 minutes, something like that. Now, finally, finally, I don't know if the weather's warming up a little bit, but the action seems to be warming up with it. We've got bit every cast here in the last few minutes. I've got one working. Back to that lethargic bite again. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Got him. Oh, yeah. Woo. Do a little dance. We're with Dan Fisher and Jake Gregg of Clacker Craft Boats and Nick Amato from STS. We're launching in what's known as Nick's Backyard, hoping to catch the early coho bite. Here on the Clackamas River, really good silver salmon hole. They've been biting really well in the morning. Um, some of these pools that are holding a lot of fish get new ones um, over the night, and uh, those fish will um, kind of turn the, turn the bite on, and then it uh, kind of slows down as the day goes on in a lot of spots. Hoping to get a few bites right off the bat. We're to the hole first, and uh, you know, as soon as a lot of people show up, it'll slow the bite down. Those flats are pretty good above, aren't they, though, Dan? The fish a lot. Oh yeah. Yeah. So this morning we're going to be starting here. We're going to start out with uh, some float and float and row here. We're going to go through here some eggs and then see what we can do. If they don't bite on this, we're going to twitch some jigs and maybe maybe chuck a few plugs and. Uh, cast a few spinners through here. We're gonna work this hole over pretty good this morning. Just a nice little small, small presentation. So Dan, how deep should I set this? Uh, let's just start out with nine. Let's start out with nine on that row. We'll kind of stagger them all until we, until we find out what call they're laying. Is this it morning. nine off the lead or off, yeah. the, off your bait? Nine, nine total, nine total. You're, you got a three foot leader, so nine total. Well, especially in the morning, they're probably oh, suspended so a little bit in the like deeper part of the hole. And then as it um, tails it. out, it gets down to 12, eight to 12 feet. And they're probably um, near the bottom, so we'll try uh, fishing uh, suspended at first, and then we'll switch out. This one's already set up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes if you let them just mill on this, and they get in that down current, is when you get them. Yeah, yeah you do that. Go for it. That one. I don't know it's done, right? Yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Grab a spinner, grab a little egg, whatever you want to do. So these fish aren't biting in here this morning. We can't get them to go. There's a few other boats in here. They can't get them to go. So we're gonna slide down and see if there there's a little bit more current down here. And a lot of times in that that lower holding holding spot down here, those fish will snap a little bit easier. Because right here we threw them the gamut, we switched, we threw spinners, we threw plugs and bait, several different kinds, some different scent, and they would not go. So we're gonna slide down here and see if we can change it up a little bit. Got me excited, Jake. Slot, that huh? was, yeah, it was right, out, right outside that far boulder there. So how old do you think you sit on that? Uh, I think about five foot. Good job, man. I saw it go down too. <laughs> I was like, Ooh. I think yes. you see go down, Nick. Oh, yeah. Why? Well, I, I wasn't even, I was waiting to cast it. Yeah, it took a while. We uh, went through there, had a couple missed bobber downs, and everyone said I was grounded. I had to keep my eyes on my bobber, so here we are. Went through this one, got a nice little fish in here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, there he goes. Nice looking up. Knock himself out on that rock over there. Oh man. Can't find an anchor down there. You probably just woke up. A lot of good fresh fish in here. I've been seeing them 
dance on the water here. That one looks really nice. It's kicking my butt. <laughs> it's just going <laughs> sizzle burn. Woke, he, it woke, about, about hit the oar here. And then it, it woke me up. Okay, let me know when you're ready. I've got the I'm net set. Let's take a peek I'm at it. Tip here. I'll lift, give you a good lift. I'm just going to let you. Ready. Nice <laughs> bit, man. I'm sorry. There you go. Got him. Got him. That was a wild fish. That's why you fought so hard. Okay, that one's out. So I'm going to pull up here and I'll grab him out of the net here. Make sure he's ready to swim off here. Beautiful wild little coho here. There he goes. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Nice job. Uh -oh. well Welcome back to the Clackamas River. I'm Justin Wolf. After a slow start, we found our first biter on row. So here this morning I'm just using little little chunks of bait. I'm using uh, this is Procure Fuse. I actually took the salmon blend and the steelhead blend and I mixed them together just to create a little bit of a sweeter egg, durable egg for these coho. You can get cast after cast with it and you saw that one, he hammered it and we stuck him and we're gonna go try to get some more. How many feet are you to the sinker? Uh, Probably like a foot and a half to that. Oh. Like this. I'm like I'm five total. Five total. Yeah. Come on, Jake. Put your stuff together here. Pull it together. Scent spray, shrimp. It's got to work. It will work. Or they keep your stuff super organized. I, it, honestly, it, what I notice about it is when I'm tying up my leaders, and I have these too, but what I notice is wrapping them around that circle takes twice as long as it does to wrap them to wrap them when you go down, the, when you just slide around this little guy here. It just keeps them super organized. Yeah, so this is just a fishing leaderboard. I really like these because it keeps all my leaders nice and organized. It keeps them untangled. I can just throw it in my seat. When I need to swap out a leader real quick, they're ready to go. Out well, fairly shallow. Oh, nice bright one. Nice and bright. Nice job, Nick. Oh, yeah. oh, man, it's got my heart going. Ooh, that's, yeah, that's biting good. You want to switch some spots to your upper river, I mean? I just pulled up the anchor. We weren't getting bit down there and we, I rode back up about 150 feet. Nick cast it out right as I stopped and didn't go five feet and bam, they were just tucked up in this faster water. Sometimes these fish will move back and forth in the holes. We just have to do a little something here. Just tell me when you're ready, Nick. Okay, let's see. Okay. Let's sweep you over here a little bit. That's a keeper. Right on. Good job. Yeah, nice. Nice, nice little that. coho. Shiny. Good white fish. Nice. Thanks. Thank you. Good job. Nice job, Jake. There he Show. is. Woo right where you said, too. Oh, I want to cast over there. Oh, okay, you got him for the boat. I'm not going to drop the pick, it's we'll back there. I won't, I won't, I'll just hold this here. Nice fish, right in the beak, right in the beak. Come over to Nick. Go home to Nick, go home to Nick. Nice job. Good job, Nick. Moving. Might just wait a yeah, yeah, can see straight. what's going on here. It looks like we're good. You're good. Pull her in the boat. Oh, yeah. Nice job. We needed that, guys. Yeah, that's awesome. We needed it. Floating down the river and change it up a little bit, huh? Mm -hmm.
All right, this is our standard fillet table, back of uh, our pickup truck, the tailgate here. So typically, a lot of times, we don't have this uh, pro fillet mat like we do today here. So we're doing it right on our tailgate, but this makes it really nice to keep the fish from sliding around here on the tailgate. And then also, you can make it a little easier to clean up your mess from cleaning the fish on your tailgate here. So we're going to fillet this coho, but first we're going to grab the eggs out of it real quick. Um, it's got some eggs in here, so we're just going to do the standard program here. and. So I said, try not to get into the eggs here. Dan will be yelling at me. With these coho eggs, they uh, I just I put them in these paper towels that soaked a lot of the blood out. I pulled a lot of the blood out of them. Typically, like with the Chinook egg, I will I will butterfly the egg. On these coho eggs, I don't like to butterfly them. I think if you butterfly the coho eggs, they lose too much of the membrane, which holds the egg together. And then when you're casting, the berries just completely fly off. I think these are small enough that it. If you just do a good cure job on them after you get all the blood out of them, they're gonna they're gonna cure up nice and nice and ready to fish for you. So I put I put these eggs in here inside the bag, and so so typically you know when you're when you're using the the liquid cure, they say like two to ten hours. Uh, like if you go two hours, it's gonna be a more wet egg. If you go ten hours, it's gonna be a, a drier, firmer egg. Um, I I usually go. You know, I like to keep them good and cold, and I'll go anywhere, you know, 6 to 10 if I'm doing the liquid cure. If I'm doing a powdered cure, I'm going to go anywhere from 24 to 36 hours. Uh, I'm going to keep these eggs good and cold. They're going to they're gonna start doing their, uh, basically their process right now. They're going to start just sucking in all these juices here shortly, and uh, they're going to turn into a really nice egg. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, there would be no show. So please thank them when you can. Now, get out there and do some great fishing. <laughs>